Hello everybody. Today is March 19th, 2024, and it is a very special day in GoGo's history. 40 years ago today, on this date in 1984, this album was released. That's right. This is Talk Show, the third and final album from the original GoGo's run. And of course, as a bonus, I do happen to have the wonderful Head Over Heels 45. So, 40 years ago, this album, this album, <laughs> kind of a confusing cover. <sighs> this album has a lot to unpack, and I'm, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. So, March 19th, 1984, this album comes out. This is the last Go-Go's album of the original Go-Go's run. That's right, only three albums. This is the third and final. Uh, before a 17-year break, before God Bless the Go-Go's in 2001. And this is an interesting album because the best way I can describe it is their first album was Beauty and the Beat. Beauty and the Beat was, how do you, how do you put it, uh, amazing? I, I feel like that's kind of an understatement. Beauty and the Beat, their first album, came out in 1981. All, all three of their albums came out within four years of each other, right? Beauty and the Beat is double platinum. It was double platinum within a year of its release, right? The Go-Go's, you gotta realize, they are the first all-girl band that became real successful. They are the first all-girl band to have a number one, and they're one of about 25 or 6 artists ever to have a debut album go to number one on the charts. You gotta realize, that album, Beauty and the Beat, it went to number one on Billboard in 1982. I mean, that pretty much says it right there. Debut album goes to number one. I mean, how, how much better than that can you get? This album, I mean, it's double platinum, like I said, right? So what do you do? You go and release a second album because the record company wants money which is where Vacation comes from. Vacation is also a great album. It came out in 1982, about a year after Beauty and the Beat. But it also stalled. It stalled at number eight in the charts, and it only went gold. And of course, this was, you know, a disappointment, considering what they had just accomplished. And, I mean, I think it was it was Charlotte Caffey, I believe, said it. Uh, if it had not been for the song Vacation and Kathy Valentine, that would have been the end. Because had that song not been on there, that would have been the end. The album would have stalled worse, and the band would have been over. That I mean, that song single-handedly saved that album, and, you know, the title track, of course. So, of course, 1983 comes around, you take a break, then in comes 1984, and we have this album. Now, this album, Jane Wheedlin actually talks about something interesting with this album, and that is that she really doesn't like this album, which is funny. You know, it's like, how could you not like it? You made it, but at the same time... I kind of get it because she'll t she talks about even in the documentary, like she doesn't even like to listen to this album because the timing in her life when this album came out was just awful. And if you want to know what I'm talking about, which I, I'm going to get to the negatives, but first let me talk about the positives, right? This album was different than the other two in a lot of ways because one of the big changes I think personally that is really something cool is that Charlotte Caffey, she plays great guitar, great bass, whatever, she sings, whatever. But she also plays keyboards. And in the first two albums, her keyboard abilities were not really shown that much. I mean, you have songs like Fading Fast, which is probably the least popular song on Beauty and the Beat, honestly. Um, it features keyboards in the studio, but then live, there's no keyboards. So they show a little bit of her keyboard, you know, expertise, whatever. But on this album the keyboarding comes to a whole new level. This is the album where live keyboards are introduced to the Go-Go's, and you see Charlotte Caffey playing keyboards on at least half of this album, and live playing. I mean, they're adding keyboards live to older songs. I mean, the keys really come in with this album. Uh, songs like You Thought, Head Over Heels. This album is very, it's, it's different, you know? Track listing, songs like uh, I'm With You, Yes or No, these are all songs that I really think are cool. One of my favorites on this album actually is Capture the Light, and it's a real shame that that song doesn't really get played live much because it's a really beautiful song. Um, other ones, Mercenary, that's a pretty interesting song. Um, Beneath the Blue Sky, that's one of Belinda Carlisle's favorites actually. 
you thought that song's eh, okay. It's 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 a good album. It's really got a good groove to it, and I really think it's a good collection of songs. Um, so that that's some of the positives, right? But you got to realize also this album really stalled. It went to what number eighteen on the charts, and it didn't even go gold. This album sold less than five hundred thousand copies, which is insane to think about from a band that their first album went double platinum within a year. And you know, the thing you got to realize and the reason why it stalled is because there were internal problems with the band members, among other things. Now, one of the shining instances that I think of and I think a lot of people will say why this album was kind of bad and what started the downward spiral of the Go-Go's eventually is there's a song on this album called Forget That Day. In fact, that might be my favorite song on the album. Maybe, I don't know, Capture the Light is pretty good. Forget That Day. It's a really uh, beautiful, sad, somber song with a good groove towards the end. That song single-handedly almost ended the Go-Go's. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, Jane Wheedland wrote that song as she wrote a lot of songs. If you look at this album, she, I believe there's 10 songs on this album, and I think she has royalties on 9 out of the 10. Uh, if not, maybe even 10. But she has like half or full royalties on like 9 out of the 10. Um, <clears throat> either way, I think there's just one, but she wrote the song, Forget That Day. She wanted to sing lead on that song because it was a personal song. She had written it, you know, about her. It was a very, um, personal, you know, it was very much her song. She wanted to sing lead and she went, she talked to the other members and the unanimous decision for the most part was no. Belinda's the lead singer and that's the way it's got to be. Everyone has their roles and let's keep it that way. And Jane didn't take it very well, as you would think. Uh, a lot of fighting was going on because of this. And the nail in the coffin really for the Go-Go's period in their eventual fate after, I, I think the biggest, the, the last end was the Rock and Rio in 85, which we'll talk about. But this album is really what put the final nail in the coffin for the band because... After Vacation came out, you got to realize they switched management, right? You had Ginger Canzaneri, who managed them from the beginning. Amazing woman. Do some research on her. She's amazing. They ended up going to a management firm because the record producers thought, hey, you need bigger management behind you. And at the time, they thought, oh, this will be great. We'll have a new, new management firm and everything will be good. And it's all, you know, whatever. Great. Wonderful. Well, right before this album came out, there was a meeting with the management and the what was essentially stated by the management and the band members were there to listen to it was that all uh, processing fees, royalty fees, uh, royalties, whatever, all of it was to be split equally among the five band members. Now, what's the problem with that? Well, like I said, go look at Wikipedia or whatever and look at uh, Jane Weedlin, for example, look at the amount of songs that she wrote or co-wrote. About 90% of them. And what happens when you write 90% of the songs? You get the most royalties. For example, Charlotte Caffey, she wrote We Got the Beat. Think of the royalties she got for that song. I mean, she was making money hand over fist because she single-handedly wrote that song. Kathy Valentine with Vacation, similar story. But the, the management firm said, we don't care that Jane wrote 90% of the songs. All, all fees, all income, whatever, it has to be split equally. And of course, Jane said, no, you can't do that. Uh, I wrote 90% of the songs. And the kicker is that she specifically said, this album is done completely. I will do that for the next album, but I'm not going to do it for this one because I wrote every friggin' song pretty much. And there was some back and forth. You have to split all the fees, whatever. Nope, not doing it. Well, eventually, she basically told them, I quit. And she quit the band over that, which, I mean, can you blame her? 90% of the songs she wrote, and yet she's only going to get, what do you split, 105? You're only getting 20% of the royalties. And, you know, I'm not going to throw anyone under the bus, but Gina Shock, she didn't write a lot of the songs, and she's going to get the same amount. And in the past... Charlotte's getting the most money, Jean is getting the least because that's how the royalties work. Belinda's not getting a lot of the royalties either. She might be the lead singer, but she didn't write a lot of the songs, so she didn't get a lot of the, the royalties. And so it caused a problem. And 
Of course, Jane did not leave yet because they had a whole tour planned, the primetime tour of 84. And if you, let's, let's put it this way, you can watch the Wild at the Greek videos on YouTube. I actually have a playlist of them. It's not the same Go-Go's. Watch Totally Go-Go's from 81 and then watch the Wild in the Greek videos. It's not the same. You'll notice a difference in the demeanor, in the singing, in the playing. It's great. I mean, it's amazing sounding, but you can tell they're not happy. There is a stark difference in the in the quality of the playing and the and even in Belinda Carlisle's book, she talks actually all of their books, they talk about how miserable that primetime tour was because here's this album, they're trying to support it, it's going nowhere, and they hate each other. They're all fighting. I mean it's you have to go on stage and just fake it. You fake the absolute heck out of it to get through it. And as soon as primetime tour was done, out goes Jane. And the Go-Go's are now a four-piece, which that was, I believe, October of 84. Then you had, which is kind of related to this album, just going to talk about it a little, you had the uh, Rock in Rio concerts of January of 85, which some of the, they played two concerts at Rock in Rio in 85, which were the biggest concerts they had played up to that point. They were less than perfect, shall we say, which Part of it is because, obviously, Jane is gone. So they had to fill the gap, which is where Paula Jean Brown comes in. Kathy goes over to rhythm guitar because that's her original instrument. They hire Paula as the bassist. So it's not the same Go-Go's because one of the pieces is missing. But go watch some of those videos. You can tell they're not all there. The music is, it's just not good. And it's unfortunate that that was the last big show the Go-Go's played because it's not good. It's hard to even listen to knowing that five years earlier you had Beauty and the Bee, or four years even. Heck, even two years prior, you had 1982-1983 era, and they're still playing good, and it's it's a shame. So, I just want to throw that in, but it, it is 40 years since this album came out, and it's such an interesting album to look back on in retrospect and see now looking at it in the modern day all these years later what exactly went wrong with this album and why it stalled so much now of course like i said it did yield head over heels which of course is a wonderful song i have the 45 here and that's a great song it still gets radio airplay and i honestly think there are a lot of Good, good songs on the sound. Like I said, I'm with you. Yes or no. Capture the light. You thought. Mercenary. Turn to you. That song is amazing, even though Belinda hates it. Um, Capture the light. I mean, the collection of songs on this album is wonderful. I mean, it flows. And you can listen to this front to back, and it flows so nicely. But behind that, it is such a shame what happened and why this album stalled so much and really was the end of the original Go-Go's. It's hard to believe that, you know, 1981, they are on top of the world. Three years later, they, they're they strangers to each other. It's, it's almost like a one-hit wonder, but it's not because they weren't a one-hit wonder. But it kind of feels like that. Like, you have all this, this fame and this power, and then all of a sudden, it's gone. So... This has been my little retrospective kind of on the 40-year anniversary of Talk Show um, and the album here. What an interesting album and how cool it is. We're celebrating the 40th birthday of it here in this wonderful spring day. But it, it is, it's not like Beauty and the Beat where it's super exciting to celebrate because it's kind of a sad album in a way. And it has, it, it has some issues associated with it, but... Nonetheless, it's still a very good album, and it's very, very crazy to think that 1984, 40 years ago, I mean, 1984 was a good year for music, you gotta remember that. But in that, all that mix of the good music you had, this album, and it just, it didn't perform. It just wasn't all there. And I think part of it, too, is because you gotta realize all of the internal turmoil going on with the band, it reflects in the music. So even though the songs are super good, all the behind the scenes stuff, it's just getting higher, 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 and worse. So that I think is going to conclude it. I think I've said everything I want to say. Uh, the reason I do these videos and I've done them for the last two albums is because the Go-Go's are the band at the end of the day that got me into music. 
bands like Van Halen and Metallica and all those bands, Kiss, Black Sabbath, you know, those bands, the Cars, they all got me further, but this was where it started. The Go-Go's were my introduction into the world of music. So at the end of the day, I do truly owe it all to them. And this album and the previous two, again, they pretty much got me into music, period. So yeah, it's a significant album in my life and I think in a lot of other people's as well as the other two, but it's got such a weird and interesting history to it that it's almost sad in a way. So yeah, as sad as it can be to think about, it is 40 years ago that this album, Talk Show, was released. And, uh, yeah, go and listen to it, go and enjoy it. It's a great album, but at the same time, think about all the, the problems and the, the issues that it faced. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, go listen to this. And, uh, yeah, happiest 40th birthday to the wonderful album, Talk Show. That's it.